Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be doing some exciting reading. So it is May the 7th. And if you did not see my April wrap up and May TBR, I've determined that this month, the month of May is going to be all mood reading. I have a lot of books that I have been wanting to read for a while, but because I've been using my prompts to choose my TBR, I haven't had a chance to actually read those books. This is the month I'm reading those books. So I have downloaded on Kindle Unlimited quite a few books over the last few months, and I think it's time to knock a few of those out. So if you have clicked on this video, you already know what the title of the video is. We're going to be doing some dark romance reading and I am so excited for it. So I already have three books kind of on my radar that I want to read, but I do have other ones that I've downloaded, but I, I think I want to focus on these three first. So I, I'm going to start with the levels of concern I have with these three books. So we're going to start with the easiest, the, the one that I don't really think is going to have that many issues or triggers or anything regarding reading that book. And that's going to be The Brutal Prince by Sophie Lark. I have read one other book by Sophie Lark. I read Minx and I think I ended up giving that like a three and a half, I think, or something like that. Um, I did pick this up already. I started reading it yesterday. I'm at like 10% in and kind of the gist of what I'm getting is there are two rival families and for some reason the I think the youngest of one the FMC in one family and then the oldest boy the MMC in the other family have to get married for some reason. Don't know why but the thing that I what I know about this book and on the cover, there are like strawberries. Um, apparently, the FMC on the wedding day, like while they're getting married, she knows that he is allergic to strawberries. And so she puts strawberry, like strawberry oil or something on her lips so that he has an allergic reaction when he kisses her on the wedding day. So I don't know anything else about that other than that one thing. So this is part of a series as well. So depending on how this goes, I might go ahead and read some more. Um, but that's what I know about this one. I don't really think there's a lot of like really strong triggers in here. At least there were not triggers when I first started the book, like there wasn't a trigger warning list. Um, so I think this is going to be pretty tame, not a big deal. I think it's going to be more of a romance, but a little bit on a different level. Of a typical romance so we're gonna be reading brutal prince and then the next book i have that i planned on reading is does it hurt now this one i think is kind of in the middle between the brutal prince and then the one that i think is going to have the most triggers and the most issues so does it hurt the only thing i know about this one is there is a scene with a shark where the girl is in a compromising situation with her head over the back of the boat, either in the water or very close to the water in shark infested waters. And apparently I think she's a con woman and she tries to steal the MMC's um, identity or something. And that's how they kind of get together. So that's all that I know. There's a shark scene that is going to be very interesting for me to read. The last book I literally know nothing about other than there are, a, I've seen quite a few TikToks and reels about people who have read this book or their reaction while reading this book. And that is going to be the ritual. So the little blurb on the front says she is to serve and obey him he will protect and own her i'm looking at it on my phone um there are trigger warnings for this one so it has graphic violence um drug alcohol use breath play bondage kidnapping and some others that is the third book 
that we're going to be reading. And my plan is we're going to read them in the order I just said. So The Brutal Prince, Does It Hurt, and then The Ritual. We're going to get progressively darker as reading goes on. So that is the plan for this video. I also did just finish reading Corrupt by Penelope Douglas, and that is the um, Devil's Night series. There's four books in that one. So I just got finished reading Corrupt like two days ago, and I have the next one, which is Hideaway. That is downloaded as well. That's another like dark romance, but it's not really a dark romance in my mind. Um, so we might pick up that too, depending on how these these three books are. So if I'm not really feeling any of these books, we'll go ahead and substitute Hideaway for whichever one I'm not really feeling. So that is what we are doing and we're going to, to start reading. And if my sanity, specifically with the ritual, is tested, because I'm concerned. I've been about the good times. I've been sleeping through the long nights. Okay, I'm on chapter 11. I really don't know if you can see, but I'm on chapter 11. I'm 33% in and the strawberry scene just happened and it was so good. So I gotta say, I have never read a true enemies to lovers book before. Like I've read romance where it was like, I wouldn't call them enemies to lovers because it's romance. Like it's kind of hard to be a true enemy like there's always like dislike or like you don't like that one person but it's never like enemies this book is truly enemies to lovers I think obviously I'm only 33% in so I'm assuming there's gonna be lovers but the enemies piece is definitely there so like each family member has lost family because of the other side like you know the mom on Callum's or the MMC's side of the family lost her brothers I think and then Ada lost her uncles because of like the fighting and all that kind of stuff so I mean they're truly like they're killing each other truly it's legit enemies to lovers and it's seeing the enemies piece and like the little things that Callum and Ada are doing to kind of get at each other secretly because they're supposed to put up this front that they're getting married and but they can't like you know they have to make everybody think that they're actually getting married and so they're doing these little digs at each other and it's it's so humorous like he sent her to a spa day the day before the wedding to get like pampered and massage and all of that mud bath, the whole shebang. And she ends up passing out like while she's getting massaged. And he put on the list of like things that she needs to get done, like the spa list of all of the amenities that he bought. He got her a Brazilian wax and she didn't know it. So she woke up when wax was ripped off of her. <laughs> and uh, she got back at him by like taking his wedding tux and putting a god awful horrible one in its place and like just the back and forth that they're doing i cannot wait to see all the like the little pranks and things they do on each other just to spite one another and then i'm really curious like how the, re the like relationship is going to be built um, but so far it is very entertaining i have been laughing so so far very much enjoying and i cannot wait to get through with this. So it says this is a small, it's a short book. So I'm 33% in and I've only got like three hours and 30 minutes left. So it's 8.03 PM. So I'm definitely gonna be able to get done with this book today. And so tomorrow, if all goes well, I'll start Does It Hurt? Which I have a feeling is not gonna be the same kind of atmosphere as this book. But this book is very entertaining so far. I am loving the little pranks that they're pulling, so. Thoroughly enjoying. Let's get back to uh, seeing what Ada and Callum get into. All right, we are back for a update. I finished. Oh, I don't have it on my my cat. I don't have it on my Kindle anymore. I finished Brutal Prince last night, like I expected. I ended up rating that three and a half stars. It was. I honestly thought it was going to be more 
enemies to lovers longer because uh, i know the last time i checked in it was right after the like strawberry scene and i expected there was gonna be more like pranks as it kind of continues and there was like one i guess after that scene but it really wasn't that many pranks it got more into a now you're married and now you gotta live together and you gotta grow and like be a couple together and figure out what they need to do so it really wasn't very like prankish anymore so the funny scenes kind of weren't there but the book is very short i think it's only like 300 and something pages so it was a really quick read um i did enjoy it i know that is part of i think that it's called the brutal birthright series or something like that i might go ahead and continue because i think there's a total of four books uh, I might continue that series. I did also enjoy because this happened in one of the, in the Minx book that I read by Sophie Lark as well. And I don't know if all of Sophie Lark's books are like this, but she likes to include like uh, cartoon pictures of like the scene that you're looking at. Um, and some of them can get very interesting. Um, but it was really nice having the, like, you're just reading and reading and reading and then you have, like, the cartoon picture that pops up that you get to kind of see what she's envisioning the scene to look like. Um, so that's always nice. And, like I said, that happened with the Brutal Prince book and then also happened in Minx. I don't know if that's something that she continues, but that would be interesting to see if that trend continues with all of her books. So that is... The Brutal Prince. I don't really think it's considered a really dark romance. It's kind of, there's like mafia-ish scenes. Like both families are from like their own individual like mafia family. And you have like them getting into fights and there's like, there are things said that makes you believe that they've done more than just like fight. But there's really nothing dark, I think, in that book. So of the three dark romances that I'm going to be reading in this video that is definitely very tame I don't think there's I don't even remember I think at the beginning of the book it says there's like a link saying if you wanted to find the the trigger warnings you can click on it I did not um so if there are trigger warnings I don't really think there's that many strong ones um so that is definitely the most tame I did also now that the brutal prince is done I did go ahead and download does it hurt onto my Kindle and this one also has trigger warnings and this one actually does have it listed so just to give you kind of an idea there is a bunch there's a big paragraph of all the different trigger warnings for does it hurt this one says it's a dark romance that has graphic violence and gore graphic murder language um there's depression anxiety ptsd near-death situations stranded in the middle of the ocean um, there's mentions of things there's child abuse which i don't really care for at all uh, kidnapping other kind of situations um, there's also particular kinks listed so this is definitely much more on the elevated dark romance tier so that is what we are reading next. I have not opened, like I literally am on page one. So I haven't even really had a chance to give you my initial thoughts on the book yet, but I will be reading this today. I don't know how many pages this book is. Let me see if it tells me. So the epilogue starts on page 399. So it's 400 pages and we're going to be diving into this next. This one I am very interested in because there are like I said at the intro there's some scenes that I'm really curious on how it's gonna play out so that's what we're reading next and I'm super excited to see what does it hurt contains because I'm curious if it is going to hurt me <laughs> we'll see that's stupid but we'll see so I have been reading Does It Hurt for a couple of days now. It's a couple of days later. I'm at 60% through this book. It says I have 3 hours and 14 minutes left. And it wasn't what I expected. 
So the I, the shark scene happened. That was interesting. And they've been stranded. So I don't want to say a whole lot because I don't want to give away what it's about. Um, and I kind of went in blind. So honestly, I don't even know what this book is even about on like the summary of the book. But so they've been stranded and there's a third person now kind of ingrained in the story. And I don't know about him. He's interesting and I don't like him, but I think you're not supposed to like him, honestly. But the relationship between Enzo and Sawyer are strange. So Sawyer is a thief, steals identities, like I said, steals Enzo's. And Enzo has like a deep-seated anger for her for doing that. But he knew something happened the night that she stole his identity. She Like, he realized something was wrong. Found out she had stole... Like, I think she only stole, like, a... She only, she only opened a credit card for $1,000. Like, that's literally it. She didn't do anything obnoxious. She hasn't, like, destroyed his credit report. Like, she hasn't, honestly done anything that I think warrants the extreme hatred and anger this man has toward her. Like the levels of upset he has because of what she did is to me kind of excessive. And I know like Enzo has things that went on like in his life and I guess he's because of the things that went on in his life caused that distrust in that um reaction but it was a lot it was in my mind way more than needed to happen now i know it's also a dark romance it's not supposed to be fluffy but like it was only a thousand dollars it wasn't even like and i don't and i think at the beginning she even said that she didn't even use it all she hasn't even used all thousand dollars she just opened a credit card for a thousand dollars so she could live she also has some messed up stuff going on in her life it sounds like and she's doing what she's doing because of that situation. So it's not even like she's just enjoying the thrill of stealing people's identities. Like, she genuinely doesn't enjoy it. She does not like doing it. She feels bad for it. But she has to to survive because she's she has this other thing that's happening that she's trying to run away from. And she needs the money to run away from it. So, um... So that's kind of where we are in this book. I'm hoping I'll get this book done today. Um, so that way I can start the one that truly concerns me. And that's the ritual tomorrow. So, so far this is going okay. I think this is still probably going to be like a three and a half to 3.75. Because I've kind of gotten a little bored now that they're at the island. So... The first part, like the building up to what's going to happen, how is she going to do this, and then, you know, Enzo's reaction and all of that, I, I enjoyed. I liked the build up and I liked the story. But then once I got onto the island, I've gotten kind of bored, so it's not the best in my mind. Um, so I'm thinking I'm probably just going to give it like a three and a half as it stands now, depending on how the ending happens and I can't even really tell because this is on Kindle I really can't tell what's in the picture like in the black and white picture like obviously there's a lighthouse and there's waves in the ocean and all that but I can't there's something inside the picture like inside the lighthouse I can't tell what that is I don't know so I, I don't really know how it's going to end uh, but it could potentially be higher than a three and a half but as it stands now this is probably gonna be a three and a half so we're going to continue reading and seeing what happens with Enzo and um, Sawyer and everything that's going on on the island and how they're going to get back to civilization. That's what we're going to do now. Okay, so I have another book update. I finished Does It Hurt? And I ended up giving that three and a half. It's, I don't know, it was just... I don't honestly know what it was. So it was a decent book. I kind of anticipated what the ending was going to be, sort of. I don't, it just wasn't anything that 
I mean, it was just a book, honestly. Like, I, I don't think I had really high hopes for that book as it was anyways, but I'm glad I did finish it. I was interested to find out kind of what the book was all about, but it wasn't anything, it wasn't good or bad. It was right there in the middle. And I don't know. I mean, if you, I feel like that's a really good middle ground for dark romance because it did have some things that were kind of out there. The shark scene was definitely something I had not ever anticipated reading. And there were some other things that did happen, but I feel it was a really good middle ground dark romance book. So three and a half. I'm glad I read it. I'm glad it's done. And now I have moved on to Does It Hurt? I started this last night and then I read a little bit more this morning and I'm only at 18%. So this book from what I'm gathering, this is also a really long book. So this book I think is like 500 or so pages. Um, so I know there's a lot that's about to happen. But so far what I've gathered is there is a like a dark society, secret society, whatever, at this really prestigious college that pretty much anybody who goes to are super, super, super rich kids. They go to it just to basically say that they went there. They know their mom and dad are going to pay to get their grades. Like they're not going to get bad grades because everyone in the school kind of anticipates, I guess, that if you go to this college, you're going to walk away with a degree without having to ever do any work. But while they're at this college, there is a society called the Lords, which I guess rule, like they're like the CEOs of like top billion dollar, multi-million dollar companies and has like senators and really, really strong people in power that have gone through this society. And there are three initiations. And after the initiation, if you have successfully done what was asked of you for the, the Lords to become a Lord, then at the end of your three years, the Lords Society gives you a girl to own. Sounds really bad, and it is. And so Riot, I think that's his name, R-Y-A-T, I'm saying Riot. Riot has just completed his third like initiation and typically, I guess, it sounds like that people are able to choose who, the guys are able to choose who they own. But on rare occasions, the Lord Society directs a person to own another person. So Riot was directed to, that like, he is going to own Blakely. And again, the girls, not a clue that they have just been like, decided that they are going to be owned. And so Blakely, like, I guess the girls do have a choice, I guess. Um, but they have to go through a ritual, a ceremony, and they have to vow that they agree that the Lord owns them to do whatever they want to until the Lord sees fit that they don't need the girl anymore. So Blakely has just gone through the ritual and that's where we're at. We're only at 18%. There has already been some stuff that has happened. Um, the, and also I will say the Lord, it's not like a secret society. Like I think of a secret society as like a fraternity, like they do some shady stuff, but not, you know, too bad. And I, I, I don't know, but this is my interpretation. The Lords, however, like the things that they are directed to do during their like initiation is like assassinate somebody. <laughs> like it's that level of directions. It's not like, you know, go beat somebody up, go spray graffiti in the president of the college's office. It's not like pranks. It's like legit assassinations that they're being told to do. So it's not anything that you think of lightly. Um, and I guess also if they, if the guys become lords, they become lords for like, I guess ever, like they're within the society forever. And if they do something that goes against like the lords, like rules and regulations or, or whatever, they could 
be killed for it. It's not just like you're no longer part of our fraternity or you're not part of our secret society anymore. You know, maybe you'll get a bad reputation or maybe something bad will, you know, adversely happen to you if that happens. No. With the Lords, it's, that's the end of it. <laughs> so definitely something that is very intense. And so far, I actually am liking it. Like I said, I think this is going to be, of the three books, this is definitely going to be the darkest of the three. And I can already see this is at a different level than The Brutal Prince and Does It Hurt. So this is definitely top tier dark of those three. But that's where we're going to finish. I'm hoping, I've honestly, okay, so for me, I know a book is good if I am thinking about the story throughout my normal everyday life. And I am concerned that at 18%, I'm thinking about this book while I'm at Target. Like it is 5.45 in the afternoon. And I started reading this last night, like I said, and I read some more this morning while I was drinking like my coffee and stuff. And all day, I have been thinking about this book. And you, I mean, that's a good thing because it means that the book is really entertaining to me. But it's also kind of bad because I'm concerned about my mental state. <laughs> like if I am enjoying this, this book so much that I'm thinking about it while I'm at Target, I feel concerned for my, my, my sanity. I don't, I don't know, but hopefully the next check-in will be either a reaction to something that has happened or a check-in on where I'm at in the book. A lot of times when I do do my reading, it's at night and because it's at night it's hard for me to do like screen like recording of me reading because it is very 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 dark and I don't have light so all that to say we're going to cook some dinner and do some reading and see what's going to happen to Riot and Blakely and all of the things that come into being owned by a lord because I can only anticipate it's not going to be what Blakely thought it was going to be or maybe she's gonna like it, I don't know. So that's what we're gonna do now and do some more reading. All right, we are doing a final check-in because I have finished The Ritual. I ended up giving this four stars. So I actually really enjoyed reading this book and I was unsure if I was going to. So what I actually enjoyed about this book was while it was long, what do you happen in the beginning of the book actually had an impact at the end of the book. So like I was reading and I just, you know, something had happened. I was like, oh, okay, cool. That happened, whatever. But then at the end, it actually had like, it came full circle, which I appreciate. I will say, I think this probably could have been about 50, a hundred pages shorter, um, like right in the middle, but it, overall it was really good. Really did enjoy Riot. He was a very good main character and I do plan on picking up the next book which is Center. So I will be continuing the Lords series and seeing kind of how the rest of the books go. So I was nervous but pleasantly surprised with this book. This does have some violence in it and there were some things that you know, the trigger warnings were something that you needed to account for, but it was a good read. I, I enjoyed it. So I don't know. I feel like I might be a little jaded because like I said at the beginning, like at the very beginning of this video, I had said that some people had, like I'd seen reactions to people reading this book while they were reading it. And then even after they were reading it and it made it seem very intense. And while there were some things in here that were kind of intense, I didn't, I didn't think it was that bad. But that is the ritual. So in this video, I had a pretty good time. I enjoyed reading all these dark romances and I feel like it was a very nice change of pace. It was something that I actually really enjoyed reading. So we had The Brutal Prince, which I was laughing out loud through part of that. We had Does It Hurt, which had a very interesting shark scene. And 
other than that I got kind of bored toward like the middle of the book um, but it was a decent book and then we have The Ritual which was probably my favorite book of the three and I'm very excited I finally was able to read this so but with that that is going to be it for this video if you have made it to this spot let's put a how about a skull emoji because there's the lords have masks that they wear and so he has like a little skull mask on the cover so let's use a like skeleton or something of that manner if you made it to this part of the video and yeah and with that if you have not subscribed please make sure you do so i would greatly appreciate it and i will see everybody in my next video bye